So in this video I want to talk about the importance of a PhD routine for your productivity and really for you know I think your overall happiness and success as a PhD student. So you know before we perhaps dive into it it's important to also ask ourselves like why would you want to have a routine and you might be thinking well I'm not that kind of person who's you know very organized I'd rather do things spontaneously you know and having a plan kind of destroys that spontaneous aspect of my life and, and everything I want to have the flexibility right and that's all well and good, but really, I mean, the, the number one key to success is having a routine. If you don't have a routine and you just kind of wake up every day and then decide on the day what you're going to do, then you will never succeed at anything or it will really be really, really difficult and you will see people constantly kind of outperform you, you know. And when you look at the top performers in, in any discipline, they have a fixed schedule and a fixed routine and a fixed plan that they follow. And also having that fixed plan allows you to achieve more within the confines of it, which frees up a lot of space around it, you know, for your hobbies, for going out, um, for your friends, for your family, or for whatever else you want to do, you know. And it frees up your mind as well, you know, so when you actually have that free time, and you want to hang out with your friends, well, you're free to do this because you've already finished your plan for the day and you know you don't have to think about what's going to happen tomorrow because you already know, you've already planned what's going to happen tomorrow, right? So let's dive right into it and let's see what a really good PhD routine would look like. So the first tip, that I've got for you really is to is to plan things right and have a long-term goal and intermediate goals that help you to achieve that goal and map them out on semesters so that you can identify you know the actions that you need to take on a weekly and daily basis and once you've planned all that then you want to start putting those things down in what I would call just a PhD journal or a planner, you know, this can be just a, a notebook, a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And, and there, you know, what you want to do is at the end of each day is to plan the day ahead based on the intermediate and the long term goals that you've identified and the priorities that you've set yourself. That's the first step because if you, if you don't have priorities, if you don't have clear goals, then you're going to be taking stupid actions or just random actions that don't really move your PhD boat forward. So you've got to have your priorities clear. And, and then, you know, plan your daily and weekly actions ahead and put them down in your PhD journal or, or planner to, to move ahead, right? So that, that would be the, the first thing. Now, the, the second thing that I would really recommend you to do is to have a regular and sleep and wake up time you know and I know that different people are different some people prefer to work in the morning some people work, prefer to work in the evenings but really again if we look at the people who are the most successful in any discipline it, it does seem like a trend that most of these people wake up earlier right so if you look at you know famous and sports people like you know like Kobe Bryant um, or if you look at, you know, famous business people or scientists, you know, they all seem to have a morning routine where they really wake up really early and go to bed early, you know. And I'd recommend trying that, you know. I thought I wasn't a morning person and then I gave it a go. I started it, I stuck to it and now I wake up at, you know, 5.30 every day and, and it's fine, it's great. I, I get so much stuff done by 10 a.m. that it's just unbelievable. Most people don't get that stuff done until 6 p.m., right? So it's, it's really, really helpful. But the bottom line is you have, you have to have a regular wake up and, and go into bed time, you know? If you wake up at a different hour every single day and go to bed at a different single hour, this just like disrupts everything and you can't plan anything because you, you can't plan that you're going to start writing at 9 a.m. if you wake up at a different time each day, right? So, so stick to that, like decide when you want to wake up and when you're going to go to bed 
and stick to it regularly every single day, right? Now, another thing related to that is to get your, you know, average eight hours of sleep. And, you know, I know that maybe some of you want to go out with your friends, right? And you want to have a good time as well whenever possible. And I'm not saying not do that, but really, you know, one of the things that impacts our productivity negatively the most is lack of sleep, you know? And the funny thing is that, you know, the more sleep deprived you are, the more delusional you become about sleep and the more you start thinking, well, I don't need sleep. I'm that kind of person who can survive on four hours of sleep. That's a delusion. You can't survive on four hours of sleep. Like your mental capabilities just become that of like a three-year-old and you will never be able to write your PhD thesis. So this will make a huge difference. It's a small change, but like really try to get like on average eight hours of sleep. And, and try to notice, do you need eight hours, eight and a half hours, or do you need, you know, seven and a half hours, right? Or do you need nine hours? And, and try to stick to it and establish that baseline and always stick to it no matter what happens, right? So, so that's another tip. What I would also suggest is getting in some exercise into your daily routine. And again, you know, you might be saying, well, I'm just not sporty. I don't have time for this. You know, there's lots of excuses that we make up. But sports, you know, naturally doing sports releases, you know, endorphins. So it will make you feel happier. It will make you feel more energetic as well as you go through your, through your day. And in the end, it's, it's fun and it's something to do to take your mind off um, work as well. And in the long term, I mean, uh, the, the long term benefits of it, I mean, are just so good that it's, that it's not even funny. I mean, you know, it's, it's going to make you healthier in the long term. It's going to make you look better. It's going to make you live longer. And it's going to make you finish your PhD faster as well because you'll have more energy and your brain will function better. So just do exercise, you know. 45 minutes each day is enough. And choose when you want to do it. In my opinion, the best time to do it is early morning. Wake up, you know, have a small snack maybe, and then go in and do your exercise, right? Um, and then you're ready for the, for the day. Because at the end of the day, you might be tired and there's always excuses at the end of the day, right? You finish your work day and you maybe go like, oh, you know, no, I, I don't fancy exercising today, let's watch Netflix. Oh, I'm really tired, I'm gonna go and see my friend. Oh, I, I still need to do this extra thing and write this extra thing, so I'm not gonna exercise, right? Do it in the morning, get it done, then it's done, and then you can move on um, to your day. Now, another super important thing that like will really skyrocket your productivity is to chunk your time. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, what a lot of people seem to do when they're writing a PhD thesis or doing research is that they start writing something and then, you know, they notice, for example, that they're missing a reference. So then they start looking it up on Google Scholar or in Mendeley or whatever. And then it takes them, you know, 20 minutes to find it. Then they need to read it a little bit. And then they come back to the writing and they realize that they don't know what they were writing about anymore, right? So instead, what you need to do is to like set blocks of time for one activity, right? So forget about multitasking. Multitasking is absolutely bullshit. Like you, you, you can't be productive if you're constantly switching tasks at the same time you want to achieve you know that state of flow and deep focus and the only way to achieve that is to schedule time for one particular activity and not do anything else right so this comes back to my one of my previous tips where you have to plan stuff right and when you have to you know schedule things in advance and you know typically what you need i think is you know the whole morning devoted to one activity. So I'd recommend, you know, that for example, in the morning you get out the most difficult tasks because that's when you're fresh, that's when, you know, your brain isn't tired yet and that's where you can get that difficult stuff done. So for example, writing, you know, schedule three hours in the morning or four hours and however much time you have that you're going to write. And then in the afternoon, maybe you, you're going to do some extra reading and take notes on those readings. But don't mix them together, right? Because it, it really isn't going to work. So that's that's another tip that I think will really, really help you. Another thing that you know I've incorporated to, to my routine 
and, and I've realized it helps a lot as well, is to go for short walks, right? And I like to do them either at midday, right? Or at the end of the day. And at midday, they're really good, you know, when if you, if you can grab a quick lunch, like a sandwich or something like this, and then you still have 20 minutes left, and go for a walk around the block or to a park or wherever you are, you know, keep it short, you know, it can be 15 minutes, 20 minutes and just try to not think about work, you know, just observe what's going on, look at the people around you, you know, at the trees around you if you're in a park and just, just have a walk, breathe fresh air and this really helps to kind of you know, give oxygen to your brain. Sometimes, you know, we're just stuck in these stuffy rooms for the whole day, and that's not good for our productivity. So this really, really helps as well. Now, you know, I've talked about the importance of sleep and regular wake up time and exercise, but, and connected to this is, is food. Because really, you know, I, I, deep down, we are basically, you know, biological machines that need biological fuel to keep us going and if you put bad fuel into your machine then you're going to get crap out of it as well you know because we, we really are what we consume right so if you consume crap you're going to get crap out of it and you know you're not really going to be very productive and it's it's so simple and again the benefits the long-term benefits you know are just so great like Again, like with exercise, you know, you will look better, you will live longer, um, you will feel better, and you will think better as well if you eat healthily. So, you know, forget about all that processed food, cut that out, you know, eat a lot of veg, eat a lot of fruit, you know, um, drink um, healthily, like drink a lot of water, for example, um, cut down on alcohol and caffeine and things like that and any fizzy sugary drinks just get rid of those right and this will really immensely help you with your PhD um, routine. So in this video I went over some of my top tips for a perfect PhD routine that I think will really help you maximize your output and also feel happier, feel more productive and enjoy the whole process more. If you enjoyed this video then give it a like, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss future videos and if you want to accelerate your progress and write research papers for high impact journals then let's talk because I've set some time aside this week to speak to you one-to-one -on, -one on a strategy session and we're going to dive deeper to understand your specific challenges, what your goals are and we're going to outline a personalized strategy for you. And if you're interested, the link to apply is right below. The strategy session is completely free. And as I said, we're going to outline a specific personalized plan for you that will help you achieve your goals. So I'm very much looking forward to meeting you on the strategy session.